And we are back with episode 11, the aggregate dashboard. I really shouldn't be doing this. I haven't prepared a thing, but I've just come out of an awesome um, streaming session with Ushval Gandhi, uh, who was showing how to use aggregate functions in QGIS, the QGIS expression system. And I was just it was blown away what he's doing. I'm so inspired. I thought I have to go and play with it. So. I had a simple idea of something I could try that would be kind of fun and interesting to do. Uh, I'm going to try it here. I haven't prepared a thing, so everything may go wrong. <laughs> we'll just um, delete this video if it goes totally wrong. And um, But otherwise, let's hope for the best and see how we get on. So um, what my idea is, is to take um, one of the expressions that he was using here uh, and this page, I'll, I'll put the link to this page. This was the basis for the for the, the expression session he gave just now. Uh, to take one of the simple expressions here, which just shows the number of, um, let's see, oh, there was an even simpler one which showed the selection. Um, let me just find it again quickly. Oh, I'll make it up as I go, but to just basically show the, the count of uh, selected features in a layer and to show that on a dashboard kind of thing. Like, so I want to I want to go in QGIS here and I want to have like a little box here with a nice big bold letters in it showing me um, the count of selected features in another layer. In this case, I'm going to select some contour features or something like that. So. Uh, that should be fun. I, I think we could make all sorts of nice nerdy GIS dashboards like that. This project is so slow loading. I'm not going to use this one. I'm just going to find something else. It doesn't matter which project you use. It's really just to have some kind of... Uh, let me see what I've got. Um, let's go to Kauai. That I was on the other day. There's some roads in Kauai. I was playing with some um uh like a glowing theme from somebody that uh, that somebody uploaded to the QGIS symbol library i uh, just want to have an actual island there because that's where it's going to be nicer those roads are really slow to low i don't think i'll use the glowing theme for this one let's just go turn this into a simple symbol I kind of like that symbol. I want to save it for later maybe, but it's very slow to load. So I'm just going to go and save this um, in my library here. I'm going to call it um, Blue Glowing Lines. Catchy name. And I'll just save that because then I can use it later. Okay, and then I'm just going to change this back to like just a simple, simple line layer with no effects on it. I get rid of that and um all right, that's much easier on the eye. This thing is kind of broken. When I zoomed into here this should be uh let me see. That makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it? Okay. Now so what I want to do is I want to I want to have an interaction like this where I go here, I select a couple of roads. Uh, Helps if I select a little roads layer. I select a couple of roads. Did something get selected? Let's try to zoom in a bit and just see what's going on. And the roads are where? They're gone. I think I'm just finding some kind of quirky bug in QGIS. Okay, let's start a new project. Um, we just do my favorite workflow. We go and get an XYZ layer here. Ooh, let's do open. Open topo map sounds like fun. Okay, cool. And let's go to beautiful Portugal. Here we go. Let's go to ah, let's go to Castelo Branco there, and I'm just gonna get the the roads and things from OpenStreetMap here quickly using my favorite 
plugin by Etienne Trimail. How's my French, Etienne? Etienne Trimail. He's got this uh, tool that will let you just download highway. Um, there we go, highways. I'm going to say everything in the Canvas extent. We run that. Okay, and now we've got roads for that area. I can get rid of that one again. Okay, I don't need the points. I'll get rid of those. I don't need the highway polygons. I'll get rid of those. And then I'm going to save this to a new geo package. Um, let me call this one. Let's see. Hello. Uh. Okay, I'm going to call those roads. Geometry type. Well, actually, what I'm going to do because it's asking me for the new for a new layer to make in there, so I'm going to call this my dashboard. Um, let's call it, uh, uh, let's make a point layer, uh, let me call it dashboard and I'm going to make it as a point I think and then uh, I'm going to have one thing which is going to be the name, something like that, okay. All right and then in that Castello Branco data set, I'm going to drop in these highways because I don't want to work with a temporary layer. Then I'm going to get rid of the temporary one and drop it back out of Castello Branco back into my map. All right, now let's see if we can uh, maybe save this. Oopsie, let's save this as a project. Um, my focus has been stolen. Where did it go? There we go. That's a, just a little irritation in GNOME that sometimes the file dialog appears below the um, the main application window and you've got to go and scratch around to find it. Uh, I'm going to rather say save to geo package and I'm going to choose Castello Branco and I'm going to call it Castello Branco dashboard. Okay, so let's see. I can select some features now. Yep, okay, great. So we saw from Ujaval that there is a function that will let you find out how many features are selected in another layer. So um, let's just go and see if we can. I'm going to use the label um, options here. I'm going to set a label for this. Yeah, and I'm going to use an expression for the source of the label here. So instead of saying name, now I want to use an aggregate expression. Uh, make the font nice and big so you can see it. Um, so what I want to do is I want to get... Um, if we search for select, you can see num selected over here. And there's an option to give it a layer. So I'm going to say num. So it's not even using an aggregate expression. That's also fine. So now I'm going to give it the name of the other layer, and the name of the layer should be. Um, let's see if they give an example. I think we can put it in quotes. Or so let's see. So we're going to say highway. Maybe we try it in double quotes. single quotes okay so we can see 143 features selected so I'm just gonna leave it like that and then um, 
we don't actually have any dot on the page yet, so I want to use the geometry generator. We need at least one feature. So for the what I'm going to do is just make a um, kind of a geometry generator to put a, a dot in the corner here. I'm going to find out. I'm going to try to find out the extents of the the map canvas, and then just get something that's a little bit in. Well, it can even be in the corner there, and then get the labeling engine to put a box around it. So. Let's go to, I, I think I'll have to create at least one point on the layer. So let me just edit that and go and drop that in there. I don't really care about what I put in here. It's not going to use any of this. So I'm just going to put that there like that. And then the geometry for this, for the um, placement here. And I'm going to use this geometry generator here. And I'm going to try to make an expression. Um, that's funny that we don't have the little um, sum uh, sigma symbol there for calculating that. Okay, so let's go and see. Um, I want an expression to work out the corner of the canvas. So let me go here and say canvas. Do we get anything? Extent map extent geometry representing the current extent of the map so I can get that and then so we want that so it's like a shopping basket I'm going to just drop those things in then I want to split the geometry to um, get um, let's see all the geometry functions um, let's see if there's maybe a first or um, node um, I'm just going to try all the different things so I, I I can do um, make line um, let's see polygon Um, so I'm going to just go clear here and just go and look around in the geometry options here. So there's an exterior ring. What will give that? What will you get back there? Will be a line string. So that goes in the shopping basket, and we can take the exterior ring of the map extent. So I think uh, I have to check the extent. Was it a polygon or was it a? Uh, yeah, it gives you back a polygon. So I'll get a polygon here, and I get the outer ring of that, which gives me a line, and then um, uh, let's go back to look in geometry here. So I've now got a line, and then I can say. Um, uh, we want to get the first point. There's the end point. Let's find the start point. Start point, and that takes in uh, it says the first node. So we could actually probably skip the whole exterior ring thing and just go straight to that. So let's try to do that, and we'll use the exterior ring as a backup. So. I'm sorry I'm not using an aggregate function because <laughs> I thought I would get to use one for this. But anyway, maybe the, maybe that's uh, going to be fun anyway. So there's the start point. We get a geometry point back. And that can be then generated geometry. So we're going to always get a point. It's not going gonna to ignore the, the geometry of the actual points. It's always going to make something here. But we kind of want to maybe offset it. I'll see. Maybe I'll use an offset because there's a, I think it's called transform. Um, and you can transfer, uh, no, not that one, translate, sorry. Uh, it will like let you shift the geometry over. So if we need to, we've got the, hopefully the top left hand corner, and we can sort of shift it over to somewhere. I want it always to be on the same place on the map. So let's do like that. I want to make this label big, like go big or go home big, okay. And 
I'm not seeing my geometry. It still shows that one there. So that's the placement of the label. Um, I kind of want to see it's a multi point. Um, so let's try to do that transform thing and uh, translate. Translate. Um, so we're going to give it an X and a Y. Um, I don't know how much to do it by. That's the question. So X we want to add maybe like a point. Let's see what that is. I want to go and actually make the geometry generator work on the point geometry as well so that we can actually see where it's lining up. So I'm going to change this here to be a geometry generator. Um, and let's just see. Okay, so it's not showing on our, on our screen at all. Let's take away this translate part. Uh, and I'm going to make the, uh, let's make it a point and let's make it really big. So it's not showing on the map extent. So we need to think, uh, did I choose the right thing about doing a map extent? Um, Let's go check the documentation. You see there we've got the nice sigma symbol. Um, uh, the current extent of the map. Oh, there's a center, there's a height and width. Mm. I want to just test this one here to see. If that gives us what we're expecting. We should be getting something on the center of the map, right? Let's have a look and see what it actually is. So we can go here and we can use this WKT, WKT, uh, that one there. And it shows it's negative. Okay. I'm still in 3857 coordinate reference system. Let's put it into latitude and longitude here just to make things more intuitive. Okay, so where are we on the map? Negative seven five comma thirty nine. Negative seven five comma thirty nine. So we're in the right ballpark. And how many features do we have in this layer? One. And why don't we see them? Let's just hide that away, make sure that it's not showing somewhere we're missing it. Um, let's take that and go and zoom to it and see where it actually comes out to. 
Just zoom somewhere else, pan somewhere else. Yep, so that takes us to the center of the map. Should be showing something there. That won't show obviously because that's still debug mode. Ah, there's the dot. Okay, magic things happened. I don't know why it didn't work straight away. Okay, so that dot's always going to be at the center of the map, but I don't want it at the center, really, because that's going to be like right on top of whatever I'm busy working with, right? So let's see if we can get it to the left. Um, so we go back to our original trick that we had up our sleeve. Um, That one there. Ah, there it is in the corner. Great. So our, our, our box probably goes like this, or I don't know if it goes this way around, but that's the starting point. So we can offset that a bit now. Um, we still don't see the label. Let's get rid of this translate business here. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Okay. And now we can put a box around the label like this. Uh, Maybe a rectangle would be nice. Um, put a bit of space around it. Um, and let's see, give it a bit of a full color. I'm going to try my best not to make something horribly ugly, but I'm pretty good at making horribly ugly things, so it's going to be a challenge. Let's see. Okay, so there's the green box. Let's offset it from here. So, um, no, offset from point. We want it to come up there. There we go. And then we could probably do something like, um, so our experience, our text is that expression and we could add to it, we could say plus um, and then we could say features selected let's go just test that okay that's not good um, I think that returns a number on the first case. So we're going to go to, uh, to string. Number of highways selected. Plus features selected. Let me see. Let me just test it on its own. Okay. Uh, we use the other concatenator. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to put like a, maybe just an underscore here. And I wanted to wrap around on features selected. Um, now, it's a bit tricky because I actually want to use a different font size for that. But um, here, yeah, we're just going to go to this one. We're going to say wrap on character underscore um, and on space. Oh, just on underscore. Um, maybe we can just say selected like that. We want to center that text a bit, so um, like that. Um, I think I prefer that in all caps.
What is it doing? Why is it not remembering what I typed? Okay. Uh, ideally, I would want this to be like nice and small and that nice and big. Um, but uh, I think I have to do another episode or session where I go, because basically I'd have to double up the placement of the geometries and add one above the other and kind of make them all line up and so on. Which I'm not going to try to tackle now, but let's see if this works. So now I'm going to go here and select um, stuff. Oh, Got to get the right layer. Okay, it doesn't update date automatically which is disappointing I bet you if I pan or do something to trigger there you go so what we could maybe do is go in here and just um, uh, this is like the nastiest dirty hack we could do which is um, just to let it refresh every couple of seconds, but that's not going to be so great for the CPU usage. I'll have to think of a way to make it do it, but let's just see if it works. Wait for two seconds. Wait for two seconds. All right, that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show today. I, um, I think if you take this idea, you could make a very cool looking like dashboard map where you use um, Ujival's aggregate functions to actually pull out summaries of things and display them in nice boxes around the map and actually uh, you know you can press F11 and uh, which is which is the one which hides away all the um, all the, the furniture uh, view um, that's tab usually right um, shift tab Alt tab. Ah, I need to go check the shortcuts again. View. Um, yeah, this one here. Yeah. I haven't got a shortcut for it on my new computer. Okay, that's terrible. But anyway, there you go. That, that removes some of the visual clutter off the screen. And then um, you can have lots of fun making a dashboard that updates live. Like I said, the um, two-second interval thing is not really so optimal. What we really want to have actually is like some kind of event fired when the selection changes here. I'll have to go think about how to do that, or maybe somebody watching could add some comments about how to make a dynamically updating map like that. Um, anyway, that's all I wanted to do, just kind of put that thought out there of ways to come up with some like aggregate, aggregate dashboardy kind of things. I'd love to see if somebody takes the idea and makes something really awesome looking. Um, so you had to watch me kind of figure it out along the way, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.